G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is a HK XM8, and you can tell it's a futuristic weapon because it's got an X in its name. This is a German-made rifle originally developed around 2002 and produced from 2003 onwards to this day, and was originally pitched to replace the M4 and M16 rifles after another project preceding this weapon sort of failed, which was kind of like the same thing, but it had this weird grenade launcher on the top, which, uh caused many issues and it just wasn't that good so for a more lightweight and possibly cheaper to make variant of a rifle the Examate is a pretty cool idea most of this stuff is made of polymer composite material and it's kind of reflected here because this thing is incredibly light especially by fallout 4 gun standards where you could have a assault rifle with that big giant water-cooled vickers looking thing it weighs over 20 pounds when you've got all the attachments on it. and this thing's not going to weigh anything close to that also the range on this thing seems to be pretty high off the bat as well which i think is pretty cool we'll get into attachments and you'll have the attachments that pretty much mirror what you get on most of the vanilla game things including two calibrated powerful semis that's interesting and the best attachment here is actually called a hardened semi which <laughs> how am i not supposed to laugh at that but as you can tell you've got uh, semi-auto and fully automatic variants but instead of the uh, semi auto is capping or the fully auto is capping out at powerful automatic you've also got a piercing version which will give you slightly better armor penetration which could be potentially useful but if you have gun nut rank 4 and they're actually the same a little bit more resources you can actually grab a advanced automatic which is not really present in the game on other guns also another thing to note about this weapon is it had its own proprietary system for attachments now i'm wondering whether the weapon itself will have attachments attached to these little holes and notches or whether it'll just have picatinny rails on it because i see one there and you know this thing sort of went away with picatinny rails i guess maybe this is a civilian xm8 they may have picatinny rails on civilian versions because all of the cbs buy the stuff that is already compatible with that with all of the rest of their guns but anyways i digress we're on to the barrels now you can have a carbine which would change it into more of a PDW, and this is a compact one. Also has a penis joke there, so... Yeah, this thing is chock full of penis jokes, if you didn't know. And we've also got an Assault, an LMG, which I think is pretty awesome, and a suppressed version. This has got an integral suppressor in it, which is very tempting, but for extra damage and extra range, we're going to throw an LMG barrel onto this, and we can have a collapse stock a full stock or a half stock which apparently takes this amount of resources so we've got to pull the stock apart shove all of that into it and extend it out a little bit install it and then it's good to go i guess it's all the springs and stuff for the recoil dampening so right now we've got this with an lmg barrel let's continue that with a big giant drum here that's like a g36 uh drum the this the lmg variant and i guess as a hk weapon they they designed the g36 so i suppose that makes a little bit of sense there so we'll do that not all of the exomates we'll be making will be like this but i'm going to make an lmg variant because i usually i rarely start with a variant like this and you can see that the handguard changes if you do the iron sights there um You'll just do away with this little front post, and it'll just extend that carry handle all the way out to the back for its Picatinny rail. Let's go with the Basker sight, because I quite like that one. It's pretty open, and the dot's usually easy to see. Although, there might be some... Yeah, there's an Aerotech, of course. There's a Cobra as well. So even bringing Russian sights onto this. And an OKP, that's also Russian. And it looks like you can grab a scope on this thing. Might want to check that out for a designated designated marksman rifle type XM8. But we'll leave the basker on for now. And you can throw some muzzle attachments, including a PBS suppressor, which is a big Russian one. Looks like a burrito. And it'll actually increase your range ever so slightly more. Also, you can have a giant cookie cutter muzzle break if you want. <laughs> that's kind of funky. I, I think I'd be more accepting of that on a big 50 cal rifle maybe it's overcompensating uh no pun intended for a weapon only firing the 556 five, rounds but it looks like statistically the best suppressor is going to be the pbs which feels kind of backwards seeing as it's an eastern suppressor and a western weapon but here we go also they originally were going to deploy these in tan because at the time 
the U.S. armed forces were fighting in the Middle East, and it was sandy there, and the weapon would blend in a little bit better. There's also black if you want. We'll keep the back, the black. And now we get some damage modifications. If you feel like you're doing that, you can. That'll offset your penalties almost for very hard difficulty. So if you feel like this thing isn't quite doing it for you, then there's that. And you've also got a legendary effect. But this one, we're going to be leaving like this. A suppressed LMG. What could possibly go wrong? And just like a billion of these weapon mods, Examate is located on your chemistry workbench. Weapons, Examate. And you need gun nut rank 3 as well as these materials to make your own Examates. 1, 2, 3. That should be enough. Righto, so, outside of Gunners Plaza now, it's about 11 o'clock, and this is the MG36, just kidding, it's the XMH, but in LMG form with a Basker sight. So, when I was just running around with this thing, shooting at walls, preliminary testing and all that, I've noticed that the recoil pattern is very, very easy to maintain, especially when you've got a suppressor and other recoil reducing attachments on it, so... Okay, we might have some fun with this. It's going to be very uh, very predictable, which means if we can really in our own aim, we should be able to hit stuff pretty successfully. Here's a different one that I made. Compact barrel, but with a 60 round magazine with a suppressor. It looks like the muzzle flashes are happening from where the charging handle is, so maybe something's to be looked at there. But I've also got a sniper one. This appears to be just a standard short scope as I'm going to shoot that raccoon over there. Here, take that, mate. Seems pretty accurate so far, doesn't it? There's the reload animations, by the way. It does have custom reload, and for once, my weapon isn't covered in laser sights and foregrips. That's just, that's a first, isn't it? I've also got the one with the suppressed integral barrel here. This is just another version of the semi-auto for a little bit closer ranges, I suppose, but we'll start this off by shooting at a long distance and there's my safety in case I crash quick save if I uh, crash then you'll know about it let's get started with a bit of sniping take out that guy that's a two shot kill with one headshot but we've got all this range we've got a little bit of uh, ground for them to make up before we get spotted and we've got a big magazine so I suppose there's no real reason why I can't just spam this thing especially when I've got damage as much as this and I could even push the magazine further if I wanted to but for aesthetical reasons and potentially balance reasons <laughs> I decided not to do that that way now I'm wondering whether I can get sniper knockdowns I would have to assume that I could although what I've seen from shooting that gunner that doesn't convince me all that much there it is okay so that one was just not ready to get there's a mantis there oh good on him Good luck to him, I suppose. And that one's shooting at me with a... Yeah, okay. So we can knock down. That's good news. But it's time to bring out the LMG. And we'll try to help Mr. Mantis out here. If... Oh, never mind, I just started shooting him. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mantis. So actually, that's a female Mantis. Because uh, that's how it works in there. And we're a little bit suppressed right now. We'll uh, return the bit of fire. He's ducked around the corner. So we'll move up right now. And now we're kind of got our flanks open to us, so we'll have to knock them down as they're coming. But as you can tell, this weapon is not... I'm not having to wrestle with this weapon. I'm spending my time focused on fighting the gunners and not the weapon. And I love this recoil pattern. It's great. Oh, this weapon feels so good. This is great. It's a great feeling weapon. And they've really done well with the recoil here. I don't usually talk about how good recoil patterns can be, but if you feel like you can hit things and it's not, you know, there's a little bit of fight, not that I'm, it's not making it too easy, but I feel like this is just one of those really good weapons to use. This actually might stay on the, on the loadout, on the, uh, if I can spot that gunner, there we go. On the load order, sorry. Let's switch over to this one now. We'll go loud and proud for the next couple of kills. That is a gunner with an MG42. And I am not going to survive another burst, so you get some headshot treatment. There we go. We've got a big old magazine on this, so if we go into Nerd Rage, we'll be in safe hands to get a little bit of that health back. But we've managed to push up the side here with relatively little difficulty. We didn't have that much trouble until MG42 lady showed up. Is that a grenade? It is a grenade. She was about to toss that. 
She didn't even pull the pin. Alright, let's switch over to something a little bit stronger. This one has the semi-auto receiver, as you recall. And the suppressor, so ace operator is active. We get a tiny little cross to aim with. And we're having no problems here at all. Not the giant killing spree that I would have wanted to go on when using a... Uh, when under Nerd Rage, but we'll continue regardless. There's one down there. I think I actually knocked him down, but he fell over in front of that barrier. Got him again with a cheeky headshot. Let's just uh, wait till he pops out again. He's applying some suppressive fire. This gunner definitely had his wheat bix today. There we go. He took a bit of kill on that one. Made me work for it, but that's okay. Looks like most of them are rallying up the side here. And I think we're back into Nerd Rage again. We'll throw a critical in this man's face. Yeah, thanks, Vats Camera. A little bit of Captain Bridget fan service there, I think. It's been a while since I've seen Madara in the videos, actually. I feel like going back to the MG is going to be the best uh, thing I could possibly do at the moment. Although I won't mind just getting a different angle because peeking over that corner is sure to get my head forcibly removed. Not seeing a lot of staggers today. Not not on this particular weapon. Maybe it's because it's got a lower caliber or they just didn't make the uh, stagger rating all that high. I would assume it'd be the ladder. But so far, so good. And we're slipping out of danger right now. So we might be able to pull a sweet flank off in a second there we go that one goes down and we actually get a couple of follow-up hits Ooh, that's an mg is it nope he heroically dives in front of his gunner colleague oh oh good we're, we're back at full health now because we leveled up game over gunners game over well maybe we'll see how we go let's go back over to the short barreled one now i would assume this thing has some vats effectiveness about it because it's compact and would be less eh, not really it's kind of the same as normal to be honest it doesn't seem to be all that different cheeky little stagger there as she gets blown into smithereens on that <laughs> the follow-up burst there and looks like you're the last one left except for the room breach people so here we go. Compact barrel. This is what it's made to do. Tiny rooms. Bad. Although, I'd love to throw a flashbang in here before I get started. But you bloody dare. There's the bash animation, by the way. Just while it's around. And we'll just switch over to a new gun. It appears that the DPS seems to be about the same-ish with with the semi-auto ones and the fully auto ones. Obviously, the semi-auto a little bit, little bit uh, less forgiving on missed shots, but we had a pretty good run here. And uh, what's going on there? Ah, that would be the mod that dynamically uh, shifts and uh, changes stuff around me, so I don't lose frames. That's why Gunners Plaza these days is so. 60 fps because it just says you know all that stuff over there that can be zero poly models because we need all the computing power here and now that i move out that'll probably get going again also uh this weapon again compatible with classic holstered weapons so you'll wear it on your back a little bit like that and that and that very nice also i saw some boar over there i'm gonna snipe him die piggy That one, immune sneak criticals, apparently. There he goes. A little bit of a reload animation in first person, too. All right, let's shoot something a little bit bigger. All right, so with Swan over here, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to use the standard sniper trick, where we just keep knocking him down forever and ever and ever, and he'll never be able to get back up. Although he seems to be immune to sneak criticals again, I'm wondering if there's something else around him that would be causing him aggro. There certainly is. He's going to run after them right now. See if I can't pick him off. No. Tell you what, these boom bugs are getting in getting in my way a little bit. It's getting on my nerves slightly. We're not hitting these guys at all, are we? We'll go 
Okay, I was gonna throw a critical in there, but that was never meant to be. So he'll kill one of them, then he'll get knocked down. There he goes. There goes one. Let's throw some criticals here. Worth it. Now, is that it? Not quite. Let's go for the head this time. Extra damage. Ooh, cinematic bullet camera. Ooh, I think that was a collateral because he ran inside Swan's body there. And after this, we're out of crits. We actually got one back. I think that was uh, his Grim Reaper sprint, was it? Was it? It was. Sweet. I was thinking it was Four Leaf Clover. And what was that? Oh, it's a fog crawler because yeah, they're definitely around. Good old pistol shrimps or mantis shrimps, I think they were called. And now we can sit back and snipe at Swan. We're doing 103 damage and we are now in danger. Well, let's bring out the big one. Stagger, damn it. And now we'll reload in vats and then let's build some criticals again. Very nice. And we exited vats just in time to get absolutely crushed by a giant anchor. Which, under normal circumstances, it's a it's a big anchor, but since he's been upscaled, his weapons have too. And they do feel like being hit with a big arrow anchor. Make sure we dodge that. Try to scoot him around there. If he gets stuck in that blocking animation, he's not going to be shooting us. Can he hit me? I don't think he can. Alright, through sheer volume of fire, we'll finish the job, but it was less elegant than I would have hoped. I think there's something running up to me. It's an antumbral hunter. Possibly from Resident Evil. There's also, also another one here. Come here, mate. I'll get ya. I think they've got carapaces, because they were shooting sparks off his little there and I see a feral ghoul reaver. Let's get some vats action happening. I want my crits back. I might need them, you know. There it is. We'll keep going. Good old Grim Reaper sprint. Probably not the best for this range. I should probably switch over to something like this. It's just to get that slightly better vats accuracy and not sprint to lose all my AP. All right, sweet. Got all my crits back. That's the power of luck, everyone. Get out of it, mate. Get out of it. That was the quickest dive recovery I've ever seen. I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. All right, so... We're a little bit bad at... Ooh, it's a two-shot combat rifle. Very nice. That's Overseer's Guardian, I think. Very good. Good weapon. Great weapon. That'll set you up for pretty much the entire game, to be honest. Anyways, uh, I guess we'll take on another monster. Okay, this time under the cover of night, and you know, these are only little basic raiders, so <laughs> they'll give you a nice little triple backflip if you shoot them in power armor, because that's how it works. For some reason, physics goes completely crazy, goes completely bananas, and... Let me just... There we go. Had to take out a few little bits of plywood before I able to get out that shot. Because apparently plywood just stops 556s five in its tracks. I believe it. And thanks to our perception, we'll know exactly where these guys are. Very good. Alright, I think that might be all of them cleared except for the ones over there-ish. So there's a couple over there. Never even knew what hit him. Now, there's a big Mylurk Queen over there, as well as some potential other things. There's the extra Raiders. Oh, look at that Gulper! Look at that dive tackle there. Good job. But you're going to have to go away now, buddy. And apparently, I'm still in caution after all that. That Gulper just didn't want to know where I was. I think that Raider just got eaten by a dog. Alright. I'll live with that. So, with a weapon like this, you two-shot a Mylurk Queen, just to give you an idea of how powerful this thing is. We'll take out the Ant Numbral Hunter, 
And now we can get started on that giant Mylurk over there. We'll get that last little knockdown, we'll switch over to the MG, and then we'll reload in bats because quick hands is great. Now we get to shred him. Shred him real good. Big hitbox like that. Yep. Those double backflips was a pretty much a good analogy of what this thing just did to him. And that is exactly why you want a big ammo capacity on any automatic weapon in the game, especially if you've got good stealth or during the night. And even from this range, it seems to be doing all right. I should probably be sneaking there, right? Yes. <laughs> I lack a crouch, and then I just suddenly get extra damage. Like they were totally aware of me in the first place. Prime bunny rabbit. Well, just another victim. And there's a pretty one. I could probably take that down from here, but I don't want it because the Brotherhood are cool. Anyways, so that there was the XM8 and four different variants of it. All pretty neat, I think. I would highly recommend this mod. Check it out. This is a Redux, so I'll be linking the mod in the description. Don't worry about the clipping there. That's fine, but... Look, there's different reload animation even for the drum version. I want to say that that might be ported just from an MG or a G36 mod because it's... I mean, they're similar, right? I wouldn't mind if that was the case because, you know, if the weapon's similar enough, you may as well recycle the animations. But they do work well for what it is, and I think this weapon is really fun to use. It's actually... I feel like it's one of the better ones I've used lately, and it's sort of an unassuming thing because it's not this big name weapon, is it? I think a couple of video games that I, I think it was in like Battlefield Bad Company 2. Was it a burst fire rifle in that game? Because it had to be futuristic and unique. Possibly. Check out the links in the description, they'll be there. Thank you very much for watching. Also, you can download Captain Bridget in your game, and she'll shoot stuff with her pistol. She's pretty cool. Thank you very much for watching, guys.